G'day guys, this is part one on methylation. So this will just be looking at the key SNPs and some sort of mitigation approaches. The second part will be looking at uh, some other underlying um, issues and the third part will sort of try to tie it all together. So let me just share this screen. Okay, so this is one of the actual SNPs that uh, when people talk about MTHFR genes, talking basically primarily about this um, SNP, which is involved in uh, um, folate um, uh, metabolism and homocysteine sort of levels related to that. That's a secondary one as well. Um, better known as A1298C and in, among some as E429A. So depending on when you, whether you do a genetic test, the actual raw data may be using these, no, these sort of codes or maybe using the actual number. So, regards to this one here, but there is very few people that have got the really, the worst type uh, number of risks. And even, and even basically the, this one here, there's possible impaired folate metabolism. So it's really based on associational studies. Um, it's got a certain risk factor, but uh, it's one that I wouldn't be too concerned about. So there's pretty much large proportion of the population, more than 50%. More or less of most populations will be an AA. Um, so the alleles, as they're called, but uh, you know, there'll be a small percentage like Northern Europeans, about 11.5%. Southern Europeans, about, you know, Italians in this case, 12.7%. The numbers aren't, you know, massive. So I wouldn't get too concerned. So it's involved in methylfolate conversion, okay? Tetrahydrofolate. This mutation and as a this mutation does not lead to elevated homocysteine levels. So as far as homocysteine goes, um, and methylating away homocysteine, you know this plays a supporting role but if you're you got a one of the bad so-called bad ones um it's not as problematic let's put it that way in my case i have the aa as you can see there's my 23 and me harry and pretty much that it's me for that one, so that's unimportant. Now, this is the main one, and this is the one that I do have an issue with. So, let's bring that up quickly. Yep, definitely have the issue. And the amount of people that have this issue in the population is about 15% Hispanic Americans, 12% Caucasian Americans, which you can translate that to um, the British Isles primarily, 
um, 12% um, Japanese, 6% Germans. That's probably a similar figure in Scandinavia as well. 3% um, Asians, 2% 2, 2 African-Americans, and 1% Sub-Saharan Africans. So generally speaking, um, it's really a European um, primarily uh, issue in one respect or another. Okay. So homozygous, and that's usually the actual code. C677T, just so we can memorize it. And it's a lot of diseases that are associated with it as well, um, obviously because of uh, methylation issues that people suffer. Um, you can see the sort of numbers here. And they even when it comes to some level of impairment in terms of dealing with methylation issues, there are big numbers in Northern Europe, big numbers in Southern Europe. I mean, you've only got a, less than a third of Southern Europeans if um, Italians are indicative and about 47% of Northern Western Europeans. Um, that's sort of the levels. So at least anywhere between half to two thirds of the population, depending on which part of the world they come from, will have this problem. And I mean, I've got a few other impairments which go even beyond this, which is the other pathway, which is basically the choline pathway, but we won't get into that today. So that can compound the issue. In the past where I've actually spoken about this issue, I've discussed about the issue in regards to folate, B6, B12, you know, critical components. And I've always dis said that this pathway also has an important component, which is riboflavin, which is critical to mitochondrial um, uh, energy production, but also critical to this component, depending on your genetics. So if you've got this type of allele, the one in question, key, which is what I have. When we look at this study here, pretty much this is what the actual study actually covers. I won't go right through it the, the whole lot. Um, they sort of talk about if in many large scale randomized tri trials currently tested where the lower lowering homocysteine can be reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease proves positive, then decisions about the most appropriate means of optimised nutritional status to prevent homocysteine accumulation in healthy populations will have to be urgently addressed. So that's just a motherhood statement. Now, here we report for the first time significant lowering of homocysteine in response to roboflavin. Supplementation individuals, homozygous for the NTHFR, 677C and the T allele polymorphism with levels decreased by as much as 22% overall and markedly so by 40% in those with the lower riboflavin status as baseline. No homocysteine response to intervention was observed in those without the polymorphism or the heterozygotes of CC or CT genotypes, respectively, despite a significantly improved in riboflavin status in both cases and the preselection of subjects with suboptimal riboflavin status at baseline. So they worked from there and 
they pretty much cover remember when I was looking at the snips the sort of levels they also have looked at northern China as you can see northern China has much higher levels obviously northern China Manchuria Mongolia those sort of areas are more pastoral more animal based so you know, populations that tend to be more animal based would get a lot of nutrients organ meats and a lot of other things in their diet so you know there's a bit of down regulation since you're getting quite a bit in the diet uh, especially in southern europe as you can see you know greeks have got a big organ meat tradition which is another factor that it probably affects me so, and these are the sort of levels. A couple of other countries that weren't included in that, that other list. Now, if we actually look here, this is the study between zero and 12 weeks. So, homocysteine levels, you can see quite a bit there, reduction. So, in response to riboflavin, for that, you know, for the exact, for this genotype, which is the one that I am. You can see that. And here we can actually see specifically where we're looking at changes in homocysteine. Well, when we're looking at sort of uh, issues of riboflavin and other th things like that. So riboflavin, as you can see, Pretty much all of them respond in a very similar way in terms of status. That's unimportant. When we're looking at those other two SNPs, there's not a lot of... Obviously, you can actually see that increasing riboflavin made really statistically no difference to the CCs. And, and even here statistically, you know, there's a bit, but there's not much. You know, this is slightly, you know, the, the, the sort of curve is a bit more pronounced, but, you know, as Bart would say, this is sort of statistical noise. There's a significant response. So homocysteine levels drop dramatically. You know, we're talking over in terms from baseline, which was about five, right down to minus 20, which is basically you know, five orders of magnitude. That's quite a bit of, bit of a, um, uh, sorry, four and a half orders of magnitude. That's quite a big drop in that regard. So that's the TT. That's the one that I've got. So basically what this study is actually showing is that, uh, and this is a randomized control study, that people that have got this SNP, can resolve all their issues with more riboflavin. Simple as that. So a lot of the gurus out there that are umming and uffing about, you know, oh, you need to sort this out, you need to get this supplement, you need to get that supplement, and all this sort of stuff. Nonsense. Ignore them. You're wasting your money um, listening to them. Simply put, you just need to increase your intake of riboflavin-rich foods. Simple as that. Now let's look at the list. Oh, and let's go right down to just see graphically which parts. So we've got here beef, pretty good source. Even though they, they talk about tofu, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, we know it's poorly bioavailable. So why do they even bring it up? Um, there's far more in actual, there's about well over 100% in raw milk. This is basically pasteurized milk. It's gonna be lower. You know, salmon, not bad, but you know, you gotta you got to consume probably about um, 12 ounces before you can actually get the, your full amount for the day. You know, if you're into mushrooms, it's not a bad source if you can bind up with other things. Um, if you're on a keto diet, um, pork, isn't isn't too bad, but it's not nothing to to scream about in that regard. 
and eggs are pretty good. So you can have basically five eggs and you've got your, your amount that you require for the whole day. So as you can see, most of the animal products are the key ones. We, and better bioavailability as well, which this site doesn't go into, which is important in that regard. So you could literally have four eggs, um, which would give you about 80%. And then a 12, um, um, a 12 ounce steak, which would pretty much give you two, 280 odd percent. So shit loads. So even if you just had four eggs and just six ounces of steak, you'd still be 190 odd percent. So you're getting double the amount. So that really get covered. So animal foods, and that would only be, you know, even if you're having one meal a day, you'd be covered for your MTHFR issue. So pretty much um, get your overflavored up, you resolve the MTHFR issue. Most of the naturopathic doctors that, um, that deal with a lot of the people in the vegan and vegetarian community, these people just don't get enough. It's simple as that, you know, and all they do is bitch and moan that they've got homocysteine levels, which we know if you look, we've, we've seen studies in the past about vegans and vegetarians having very high homocysteine levels, obviously because they're eating foods that have poor bioavailability, of riboflavin and they're not eating the animal products which have shit loads so even if you have the mthfr um, snip issue so if you basically have this problem which is the 677c t allele Basically, there you go. You can resolve it just by eating more meat and eggs. Simple as that. Nothing complicated. Unless you're on a vegan diet. A species inappropriate. A kibble, kill cult diet. So that's, this is part one. Um, second part, we'll look at uh, the other methylation pathway, the choline methylation pathway, and then we'll sort of wrap it all up um, and conclude the series. Thanks for listening. Um, take care and good night.